Welcome back to the Chef One podcast. We've got big news coming out of Maranello this afternoon. Lewis Hamilton reportedly joining Ferrari as early as maybe even this season. Uh, I'm here with Seb and Amy Hello. here to sort of discuss the news that has unfolded. Uh, Hamilton to Ferrari, a move that's sort of been in the making for a few years now. Yeah. Uh, but we finally, we finally seen the report. But uh, I mean, how long's his contract at Mercedes? This will be completely cutting his contract short. So yeah, he's got a two-year. I was signed it six months ago. Yeah. He signed a two-year extension, uh, but no one really knew that there was apparently this clause, obviously, that he can leave after a year. So I'm not sure about the rumours that always I sent it to you guys that yeah. he could leave apparently at the start of yeah. this season, which would be mental. I mm. don't think that's going to happen because obviously one signs like he's still got a contract yeah. there, and I, I like I just I can't that would be too mental. Like this yeah. in itself <laughs> is mental. Yeah. This but is top that Oscar. would be even more mental. Yeah, it's this is bigger than Oscar Piastri tweeting out going, I have, th- th- "There's an, a statement gone out without my agreement. Yeah, I am not driving was, for Alpine." This is this crazy. is crazy to me. I mean, it, it, yeah, he has been a boyhood sort of Ferrari fan, and it would seem fitting to break Schumacher's championship mm. record at uh, at the Scuderia, but. Um, it, 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 even even though both sides have sort of been hinting at the move for so long, I mean, there, there's recently been that sort of Ferrari. Uh, what was it? It wasn't like a press release. It was like this um, like media day thing in this sort of, sort of like gift bag. Yeah. Uh, I sent it to the group chat earlier, and mm. it had a, it had like a photo of this car, like a red Ferrari car on it, as well as like some other goodies you can get in this bag. And the car had number 44 on it. So whether that was the most that, subtle yeah. of teasers or anything like that, I don't know. And that Charles Leclerc um, press conference as well a few months ago. So you know, how what do you look? for an ideal teammate and he sort of turns to Lewis Hamilton have they known this for a long time yeah. does that make it better does that make it worse uh, I think we must talk about Carlos Sainz because he has been uh, not to you know use a sort of poor choice but he's been shafted basically yeah. like yeah. There, there's no two ways about it he's had a decent season this year sort of a few ups and downs but the only other uh, person to win a race that wasn't in a Red Bull mm-hmm. car you know uh, and that second half of the season he was driving really really well and you've got to remember back to his first season in that terribly sort of underpowered Ferrari car massively I wouldn't say massively but he outperformed Charles Leclerc I'd say finished much higher yeah. in the standards finished such a terrible year with a podium at Abu Dhabi and then sort of a little bit quieter in 2022 but still a race win here and there and uh, it's safe to say his time at Ferrari hasn't been a total waste of time um, but where, where, where do you reckon Carlos Sainz will go because to me a move to Mercedes just doesn't it do, I don't know something doesn't click inside me it, it, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense no it, well it, it does and it doesn't like on paper it seems like the perfect move yeah. because like mm. for Mercedes it's like no risk he's shown he can go to multiple different teams and just perform like basically straight on it. Especially with a poorer car as yeah, well. Yeah, and he's, yeah. he's he's got on with his teammates all the mm. time really well. He's experienced, but he's also, you know, relatively young. Yeah. So it, you see, on paper, it's a perfect move for both himself. Like it's the least risky move for himself and also for Mercedes. But yeah, like you said, it just doesn't, it's just weird. There's something about it just doesn't fit. If you just said this, I was going to say, like, you know, a couple of years ago, if you just said this to me a couple of months ago, it sounds mental, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, Amy, I've just read a thing on Twitter saying that he is eyeing up a move to either Audi, Aston Martin, and then Mercedes was mentioned, but it's sort of like a more sort of subordinate thing. Where do you see Carlos Sainz ending up? I don't know. I think this is really just a shock for me as like a bit of a Ferrari fan. I think he's been so poorly treated there. Um, I think moving forward, I was just waiting. I thought it was clear that he was going to wait till 2026 and then get his move to Audi. I just thought that was how it's going to be. And now this is put a twist in it. Um, But I don't know how he's going to, especially if it's this season, how is he going to stay in Formula One and get a seat unless he went to Mercedes? So yeah, I mean, there's no room. There's no room anywhere else. Mm. Who would Mercedes bring in if it isn't Carlos Sainz as well? That hasn't even occurred to me because how crazy this is. There's so many things to think about, so many Um, sort of factors to keep in mind. Who could they bring in? Frederick Vesti, maybe it seems a bit too early. Yeah, he's, got, he's got a seat somewhere though, hasn't he? And uh, oh, well, he's, he's doing thing. endurance. Yeah. Yeah. Valpine, I think. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think that's that would be mental. Yeah. I, I don't, he would just be a stopgap. I think. Yeah. I think Albon is the logical one. Yeah. Realistically, I think you look at Albon. He's obviously with the James Vowles and Williams have sort of got that little relationship. Obviously, engine mm-hmm. with uh, Mercedes. Yeah. He's. They've shown had, they've he's had a history of drivers yeah, as well. He's stepped up. He's best friends with George Russell, so exactly. we know that's gonna work. And he's he's not like a 
that driver that's going to really challenge mm. Russell. You think he could do, but he's not got that ego about him where they're going to clash. No. He seems like the logical choice. Obviously, Ocon's been a name that's been yeah. thrown around. That's true. Yeah, think about yeah, that. Yeah, the relationship the with strong, Toto. Yeah, a strong relationship. Yeah. That would. I don't. I don't know why they do that though. No. I think Ocon is. I don't know why this. Ocon would do that. Even though you know Alpine's sort of trajectory has been sort of stagnating yeah. a little bit. There's no harm in just staying at that one team, not risking your career. You've got a safe seat at Alpine. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but at the end of the day, he does. I think all drivers want to win a world championship. Yeah. It's Where a, is it, it more likely? It, it, it to lacks Alpine ambition, but I think now would be the wrong time to make such a crazy career jump? I don't know, because I think his seat Alpine, I think, could be under threat. I think that with Gasly sort of coming in, and he isn't the number one outright, but you know he's more favoured in sort of mm -hmm. France, and yeah. just generally he's more favoured. He, he finished the season a lot stronger than I Yeah, Alpine. so I, I think, could Gasly be an option for Mercedes well, as well? That was touted a couple of years ago, mm. um, when there was more rumours about you know, Hamilton yeah. retiring. No longer a Red Bull driver. Yeah, so. and he's obviously out of contract at the end of the year as well. Mm. There's so many drivers. Alonso's out of contract. Alonso's out of contract. I just think who would want to go Mercedes for me currently without knowing why has Hamilton done this? Because yeah. that car, they had testing yesterday. They were getting you know, seat yeah. fittings. And I just think this, personally, how we don't know the ins and outs, we don't know how long this has been agreed, but it's such a shock that it makes me think it was almost a sudden thing. And does that show maybe Mercedes yeah. aren't going to dominate? Did they completely ignore Hamilton? Because mm. that was what was said at the middle of last season, was Hamilton was having so much more input on the car. And then now he's made a shock move to Ferrari. <laughs> and it's like... They've just, I think they've not listened to him and because he owes them a lot of loyalty as much as he, they owe yeah. him a lot of yeah. loyalty and this seems quite um, an upset for me because the fact that Toto Wolff's meant to be having a meeting, the team yeah. didn't know, it, it shows to me that there was a sharp decision and I don't think it actually ended well at all. Well, if we're going to talk about loyalty, I think a huge thing that charged this move, Hamilton to Ferrari, is the fact that Fred Vasseur is now team principal mm -hmm. there. He was yeah. Hamilton's boss back in his GP2 days, you know, way before any of his world championship success. And so I think... You know, if you want to talk about loyalty, that might be some sort of agreement they've had. Maybe Hamilton obviously was, you know, immensely impressive in his junior career. And so maybe, you know, mm. maybe uh, maybe some sort of, you know, non-official agreement with Fred Vasseur. Yeah, I'll be your boss one day sort of thing. Mm. But maybe, you know, maybe he's just sticking to his word. I mean, it's a bit of a sort of, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm clutching at straws there. But yeah, yeah it, 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 it's, it's one of them that probably is a huge factor as to why he's making the move now, you know, to, to, to work under Fred Vasseur rather than, you know, some of the team principals of the past. Yeah. I think Hamilton must be confident now that this Ferrari, mm -hmm. this Ferrari uh, under Fred Vasseur can sort of, you know, yeah. make the make the progress they need to catch up. And Charles up to Leclerc with his, his mm. new deal. Yeah. There's clearly some trust in at Ferrari, which has not been for the last few years. Would, so would, would you say they're cooking? Are they are they cooking? <sighs> Don't want to jump the gun, <laughs> but I think they're cooking. Yeah, Let yeah, him yeah, cook yeah, yeah. because I think for, we'll talk about it later. But Charles, um, I think that deal for me was a bit strange, but. It's, it's clearly got some trust in them to yeah. he wants to win a world champion but I, I'm excited for that duo it's going mm. to be strange that they couldn't even pick a first driver with Carlos Sainz and Charles Leclerc yeah. so never mind having a seven time world champion Lewis Hamilton it throws a complete and utter spanner in the works in terms of the hierarchy at Ferrari I mean mm. Charles is their poster boy mm -hmm. but Lewis Hamilton is F1's poster boy yeah. it, 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 it's going to be a really tough couple of years I reckon for Fred Vasseur because while there may be success you know, how do you run a team with two really strong drivers? One who's only going to get better and better and better mm -hmm. in Charles Leclerc, and then Lewis Hamilton, of course, freak of nature, but in 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 due course will begin to regress in his skill as a driver. So it's it's one of them, you know, how much respect can you really give a you know to a 37, 38 year old world champion? It's really I, I just can't wait to see how this unfolds if it does, you know, go ahead sooner rather than later. You do have to think though, I think flipping it back to Mercedes, like surely something's happened in the last yeah. six months because mm. he signed a contract six months ago, yeah. committing his future for two years. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden now he's completely flipped on his head yeah. and gone to a rival. And I also think, you know those Red Bull talks, obviously Corner was like saying, oh yeah, there were talks with Hamilton and yeah. Hamilton denied it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe. I think now yeah. looking that probably was true. Yeah. And that maybe would have been a, would he have gone to Red Bull if that was actually I think it would have made more sense get him yeah. going to Red Bull rather than it's Ferrari less risky. for me. I, mean, I think there's still a risk here going to Ferrari because you know, over the course of last season, I mean, Mercedes did finish ahead of yeah. Yeah. Ferrari, so... And Perez is 
you know, Carlos Sainz was so good last year for what that car was. Like you yeah. said, he was the only other uh, race winner other than the two Red Bulls. And Perez was in jeopardy of a seat I was so many say, he, times. He like, must be licking his lips now that that Mercedes seat is open yes. or will be open shortly if Carlos doesn't make the jump. Yeah. I think one, th if I had to diagnose the sort of main reason behind this move and how sudden it was, all the teams would have had their wind tunnel testing time by now. Mm -hmm. Maybe Mercedes had a bit of an underwhelming car. Yeah. This is the first Mercedes designed by James Allison in two years. Of course, James Allison being the one that designed all, was it eight world championship winning cars? And so, you know, they've had two off years where he didn't design the car. Maybe this was the sort of like the, the, the last resort sort of thing, yeah. get James back in to design the cars. Maybe they'll see world championship success again. But if it was an underwhelming car and Ferrari do have a, you know, a, a rumoured, well, it was something that, they, I mean, they, they do it every year. Oh yeah, our car's two tenths quicker than it was yeah. last year. Mm. Maybe there's more substance to it this time. And so Hamilton has been swayed by his boyhood side to, you know, move, move over and join the Tifosi. I, I, I don't know, it, it's, it's one of them. It, I don't think we'll ever find out the true reason behind this move. If you ask him in press conferences, he'll say, oh yeah, I've always wanted to drive Ferrari. It was a dream of mine. I had Ferrari posters on the world. Da, 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 da. But that there's got to be more than just wanting to drive yeah. for the team that you supported yeah. growing up. It's not it's not quite like football where you have that sort yeah. of that 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 affiliation for a team growing up. It's it, it's a different sort of. I suppose Ferrari might be the exception to that rule. I don't know. I am waffling a bit here. But, but you well, know. you say that, but otherwise he would have gone during 2016-17. There were rumours mm -hmm. yeah. at that time yeah. uh, that he could join Ferrari. And yeah. He didn't yeah. because it wasn't logical. Mercedes had the best car. Yeah and he could be, he saw the package and he believed in the package so i think it has to be that the package isn't good enough at the moment for mercedes but how awkward does it make it this season it's another yeah. sort of you know the vettel situation for 2020 mm -hmm. for both sites and hamilton but for the whole season i know but and it's like do they just basically do what vettel did and sort of just basically give up right yeah <laughs> vettel sort of yeah. just sort of was just a bit he's gonna be 40 awful, but. lewis hamilton in 2025 <laughs> yeah. 40 and he's going which is due all credit to him that he can drive for a legendary team such as ferrari at 40 years old because yeah. he is a seven time world champion yeah. at the end of the day but he's gonna be 40 and i think how long is he going to go to win that eighth world championship? Like? I mean, the, the, Kimi Raikkonen sort of did it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he left the team, what was he, 39 when he left the team? Mm. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's certainly added to how good a driver Lewis still is. You know, it, just because it's been two off years for him, it has been the car, realistically. Yeah. Yeah. And he has made his own mistakes more often than when he was, you know, in his sort of domination period. But you're going to do that when you've got a worse car. Exactly. So like, it, it's only fair that he is making, you know, sort of more and more costly errors. Like, you know, if you look back to uh, Qatar, for example, this year, just straight up turning into his teammate, and then didn't really seem to affect George Russell, who had a stonking weekend afterwards. But yeah, um, when you're not fighting for anything, you yeah, do just you just basically end up not caring as much. Yeah. and even though relative to other people, he is was still fighting high up the grid. For mm. him, it was completely different to yeah. what he's had for the rest of his career. Yeah, I did think that science was going to leave uh, eventually. Mm. I don't think he was ever their long-term plan, which was weird because I think he's been hard done. Yeah. Like, what more could he have yeah. done as a teammate to their golden boy? Like, he literally was the perfect teammate. So mm. it doesn't make, for me, it doesn't make any sense. Do you think it makes sense for Ferrari to have done this move? Does it, does it, you know, put Sparrow in the works? Does could it? end up making Leclerc want to leave. Could, yeah. it, could it absolutely put everything into turmoil? There's obviously this golden rosy picture mm. where they both get on really well, Hamilton yeah, wins a championship yeah. and then Leclerc wins it the next year and things like that. It is all hypothetical. Or yeah. could it absolutely go, you know, tits yeah. up basically. Yeah. Like. Both drivers I would say have probably got the biggest fan bases worldwide. Yeah. Obviously yeah. Lewis Hamilton you know, yeah. everyone knows yeah, Lewis Hamilton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I guess over the max, Charles yeah. Leclerc, he's a Ferrari driver. You know, everyone loves Charles Leclerc. I have just read here that in j just today, Ferrari's price on the stock market has risen by yeah. 6% as a result of this Hamilton news. It's now, I'm saying $4 billion is the sum yeah. now as a result. And uh, yeah, crazy. Mm. That just goes to show that Lewis Hamilton not only will get you results, but he is a, he's a brand. He is yeah. a brand. Like yeah. he's, he's, he's He's, he's global, he's, 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 he's just one of them celebrities that can slowly but surely do anything they want. He's got that music thing going on. It, it's just added to him as, you know, as, a, as a global superstar. Yeah. And this might be the driver that Ferrari need because they've had, you know, the, Charles is that sort of poster boy for you know, all the fragrance adverts and stuff like that. <laughs> but you know, 
it still wasn't quite to the same extent of Michael Schumacher, for example, or even someone like Alan Pross before that. Mm. Hamilton is that global superstar. Yeah. That is sort of in the echelon above Charles Leclerc. So this is a great money move for Ferrari. Yeah, financially, it makes fi sense. Financially, it makes total sense. Although, um, you know, obviously lucrative wage, but it, yeah. it, it, well, Ferrari, Ferrari is probably the richest team in in Formula yeah, One. Yeah, so yeah. I think I think the wage won't be an issue. I'm buzzing as a Man United fan because then Ineos have got Hamilton off the wage bill. It's all going to get shifted over to Old Trafford renovation. I can't wait. But yeah, um, yeah, it, it, I, I I think this is a good move. I, Part of me, maybe the naive bit of me, says you can't turn down an opportunity for no. Lewis Hamilton to, to drive for your team. No matter how old he is, no matter how sort of lackluster the past two seasons have been, it would be, it seems foolish to turn it down. Yeah. Especially considering if you want to push Charles Leclerc as well, bringing someone like Hamilton in could push him to, you know, may, may, maybe this is a move to make Charles a better driver. Yeah. Because uh, I, I, I to don't learn know. Off. It's so, definitely someone to learn. If you couldn't have a better mentor right. than Hamilton, Russell's been very sort of vocal about how he's also been, you know, really helpful in his career yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, and and you just look at his history of his teammates. You know, he either pushed them or helped them progress so much. People like you know Valtteri Bottas. He, he I think he just wiped the floor with him. And so, like, there's no two ways about it. And, and, and drivers like Jensen Button and stuff like that, they, he just works well with anyone. Yeah. That's the thing. There's very few internal conflicts with Lewis Hamilton, mm. apart from he's so much better than me, it's annoying. That's the thing. But, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I think this is a good move for Ferrari. I think it could be the making or the breaking of Charles Leclerc. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think he's got his chance now to have a teammate who is seen better as, as him than him. And he's he's got a chance to prove that he he can be bet he can be yeah. a world champion now, and if he beats uh, Lewis Hamilton in equal machinery, then I mean that'll be really impressive. And I guess going forward, you've got to value him in, in a respect of going for them world championships with Max, and it's just about getting the car right. Um, I just I'm hope I, I just don't want to get too excited now because Ferrari must have a good car to make yeah. to make this happen. I just yeah. I'm On excited. the flip side, though, if it gets destroyed, oh. I mean, that could be... That's the end of him. You think, that is the end of him. Not the end of him, yeah, because no. he can come back from that, obviously. Yeah. But, but it's team. the end of him having that huge support around him, you'd think. And I, I know. Huge I mean, around. and then you could argue, well, he's got that cushy contract for, for years now, but... Carlos Sainz had a contract, exactly. Lewis Hamilton had a contract. Exactly. Contracts in Formula 1 aren't really the be-all and end-all. Yeah. Everyone's got a price. But yeah, I think we'll round out uh, the Lewis Hamilton talk for this video. If you want to check out the rest of our content, we have got uh, our social media handles <laughs> behind us here. Really bad handwriting. Very professional. Very I think professional. it's out of focus as well, which isn't ideal, but you can check us out on YouTube, uh, which you probably are doing now yeah. if you're watching this. <laughs> Subscribe. Or, or on TikTok or, or on Instagram. All will be linked down below. Uh, you can listen to the podcast if you, don't want to, if you just don't want to look at us. If you can listen to yeah, it on Apple Podcasts, I recommend that. maybe Forge Radio, uh, because we've lost our slots, <laughs> which isn't ideal, and, uh, and, and obviously Spotify as well, which is where I can imagine where a few of you are listening to this as well. But thank you very much for watching. Thank you, Seb and Amy, for joining me thank, in thanks the for studio. Uh, what do you mean? It's your podcast. <laughs> thanks for having me thank, on. Thanks, uh, yeah, thanks for, thank, thanks thanks for coming up. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching, and uh, make sure to check out the rest of our content. And yeah, see you later. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>